Hello everybody, it's Emperor Stuart Swerdlow and Janet Diane Moria Swerdlow and, and this is another addendum to the Expansions News Podcast right. for summer 2018. Let's have an interesting story and this one has to do with androgyny programming. Well, we never heard of that before. Androgyny programming, never heard of that one before, no. right? Rose McGowan, who is an actress, author, model, and singer, and she 40, jobs. Yeah, 44 years old, now has had her new mystery partner identify, get this one, as non-binary gender model Rain Dove. Okay, wait a second. A non-binary, so it's like a computer system? That's a non, that this non-binary gender model prefers the pronoun they. They, because they. they're... Thing. Multiple personality yes. disorder, obviously. Obviously. And the name is Rain. Rain. R like the rain that falls. Rain. Dove. Dove like the fly. Like uh, the thing that flies. That reminds me when I I, I had... Do, remember when I was working in Maui? Yeah. And, and, oh. uh, and uh, all the people came. And people said, I would say, what's your name? My name is Tree. Another mm. one's name was River. Yeah. So this is Rain. All right. So this is these are programming... Terms, trust me. La, on this la, one. La, la, we're la, not people anymore. We're a thing, I we're guess. Things. We're not, or, or we're an non binary, whatever that means. Right. So, anyway, this uh, Rain Dove, believe it or not, is a famous model for both men's and women's clothes. Not surprising. Now, Rain was born a female. Aha. Uh -huh. But they, in quotes, became a model because they this person agreed to go to a Calvin Klein lingerie casting call and then was told to come back. And then now models, like they'll, they'll model like one in a man's clothing and then they'll change their hair and then they'll be in a woman's clothing side by side. Mm -hmm. So that's definitely androgyny programming. At least. Now, now, Rain Dove said in 2015, I think all people are androgynous. They can mm -hmm. think all they want, but we're not. you got the chromosomes, okay? Um, I just think we've created these genders. No. So, you people out there, you need to read True Reality of Sexuality and 13 Cubed, all about programming and sexuality. Yeah, look it down in your pants and see what parts you have. Yeah, so. And that will tell you your gender. It's well, very simple. Well, it says here you won't be able to figure out what's, what it's in your, their pants. Really? Well, that's what, according to this. So, you're apparently you're wrong according to this article. Well, you know what? I'll yeah. take a look and see. Yeah. So anyway, earlier this year, then Rose McGowan also said she no longer wants to be identified by gender. She mm -hmm. says, quote, I don't want to be a man or a woman. That's the thing I'm not. Well, you know, you are. If you got mm -hmm. chromosomes that are going to yeah, tell you. If you have breasts and a vagina, you're a woman. Well, we have talked about hermaphrodites in here. And these are people who cannot be chromosomally identified as male or female. Mm -hmm. The scientists don't know. These people are the only androgynous Well, they have people. a read. Those people have a reason. These people are the only androgynous of their hermaphrodites you can't wake up about. one day and say you know I don't think I am my gender anymore yeah, so. like that woman who was a born blonde with blue eyes and decided she was black right and now, she's not it gets it gets I, mean, I don't know whether to say worse or better at this point but I got another story for you this is the first time I've heard about it maybe you've heard about it have you heard about a baby a who okay I didn't think so a baby okay like could it they... possibly be a child that came from Two non-binary people who call themselves they. No, but you're close. <laughs> this there's a group of people now. They're claiming it's a small group, but this is how things get started, as you know. Children being brought up without gender designation from birth. These are called babies. So there's a this the article focuses, and you can read it for yourselves. The article focuses on parents who had twins. And they didn't want the twins to know if they were a boy or a girl. And they didn't want people to stereotype them. And so if, apparently the woman is an engineer, a mechanical engineer, which is a bit typically a, a male field. So she said she didn't even want to know what her twins were, were going to be. And her husband didn't understand that. I wonder why. But for some reason they went along with it. So at the hospital, when the babies were born... They put the babies in her arms without even telling the parents what the sex of them were. And so from there on, they decided, what if we never tell people what they are? So they've never told people, including their twins, if they're a boy or a girl. These people should be sterilized. Now, the issue is this. I'm going to tell you. I told you this last time. It's about like breastfeeding. Breastfeeding was never an issue. I breastfed 20 years ago. It was never, ever an issue. I never breastfed, ever. Well, that's you're just not I with refused. it. I refused. So... Point being is, is breastfeeding has always been normal. 
if you are chromosomally male or female, there are differences in your brain and in your body and the physical differences. And so I'm not going to get into that. You can look all that stuff up yourself. Imagine if a cow decided it was non-binary. I think I'll be a bull today. Yeah. Well, anyway, it says that these, these are, they're calling them in the article progressive parents, which I think they're parents that need to like go to mental health. They're not progressive. Health. They're, they're they're mentally ill. They need to go. That's what I was going to say. They need to go to mental health counseling. Seriously. So there's a, a Brooklyn couple who says that um, progressive parents see their child's gender as fluid rather than binary, and that's not true. Again, chromosomally what the heck's correct. What's the difference? So anyway, there's, there's a Brooklyn couple that has a blog that features their two-year-old named Zoomer, which sounds like a dog, not a child. Offering advice on how to navigate the world while raising a baby. Oh, for Christ's sake. So, let me go on. Oh, yeah, they, she also didn't want, this couple didn't want other people to know what their babies were in the womb because they didn't want them to talk about them in boy or girl terms. Those are really mentally ill people. Yeah, and then there's a, a I'm going to put this loosely, an expert who wrote a book. Uh, she's a developmental psychologist and mm -hmm. author of Parenting Beyond Pink and Blue, How to Raise Your Kids Free of Gender Stereotypes. So before I, she even, needs to go to a shrink before I even get into that, I'm going to tell you that a long time ago, when, you know, like hundreds of years ago when, when I was, we when, when we were very, very little, that pink and blue used to be opposite. Pink were, was for boys and blue was for girls. And, they, and I've researched this and I've reported on this before, but you can look that up about how the colors got switched. But a lot of it had to do with marketing. So it's very interesting what they're doing to people. So this expert in her book, um, Parenting Beyond Pink and Blue, How to Raise Your Kids Free of Gender Stereotypes, said the differences get larger as the kids get older, which suggests it's society and culture that are shaping the differences we see, not innate differences from birth. Now, can you guess why? It shows up when they're older. I don't even want to. Well, I'm going to tell you the, the real truth, not what this ex so-called expert says, because the hormones kick in. Your male and your female hormones kick in. It's called puberty, which yeah. is normal <laughs> and natural, and that's when you start mm -hmm. becoming more cognizant of your gender. Mm -hmm. you're, you know, women, uh, the girls get breasts, you know, boys' parts change and grow, you, they get hair Can in various places. children know that, that one has a penis yes. and doesn't have a penis, and so on. And so on and so forth. So I'm just telling you, it is in your your chromosomes and now it's in your hormones but there's a oh no it's culture right and I'm also going to tell you I'll tell you another story that when my boys were born I didn't care if they were boys or girls all I cared about is they were healthy period so if these parents I'm sorry they need a mental institution I'm a little bit disturbed about that uh, you if you're disturbed it's pretty serious yes Anyway, so these experts are saying that it's unlikely that children would be confused by gender open. They're calling it gender open upbringing. And it's important for parents to prepare children for a society that's really obsessed with gender binary. We're not obsessed. It's just this is the way it is. They're coming in and they're changing things. Now, if you, if you, if you care if it's a boy or a girl, now you're gender obsessed. That's just normal. It's a normal thing. Okay. People are going to want to put that child into one of those binary categories. So for children to not to be confused, parents have to give the kids language and understanding of recognizing, I'm not taking part in this binary. Yeah, this is like the new vegetarian Nazi thing. Yes, it's horrible. Now, and I didn't know this, and I have children. I bet they're all vegetarians. Listen too. to this one. In the mid-90s and early 2000s, did you do know that they call these the Generation Zers? I didn't know that. Z-E-R-S. Who said that? that? This is now. So 56%, according to whatever study, did this and, and labeled them. I never heard. Again, let me know. Did you uh, hear? Who are they? I'm going to tell you. This is the generation born between the mid-90s and early 2000s. Well, that's a short period of time. They call them Generation Z-ers. Why? I don't know. Anyway, they report knowing someone who uses a, de a gender-neutral pronoun. So they're more used to using the pronouns that are not just she, her, he, and him. And then they go in to tell the story of another girl named Hazel, who was not raised as a baby, but then for some reason, you know, I'm sure the second grader came up with it all on her own, she decided to be a demi-girl, someone who was partly a girl, and therefore they want them to call her a they. 
So she says they don't, her kids, and this is a seven-year-old, her kids at school don't make fun of her because they don't understand, but she says they get confused about the pronouns, but they're not mean. So this Hazel, who's seven's father, Ari Dennis, who uses they and them pronouns, says the top, the family's top priority is to ensure that their children feel accepted who they are. I'm sorry. Wait, between us all together, we have five children. They always know who they are. And this is ridiculous, but they raised their youngest five-month-old named Sparrow. Again, a dog. Sparrow. Dog or bird. You're not a person now. You're a, a bird. Okay. There they raised their youngest five-month-old Sparrow as a baby. So that's probably where the seven-year-old got. Yeah, it. that that kid won't have too many problems when it gets older. No. And so it's interesting because this person, the parent, uses a gender-open parenting and has a Facebook page. And describes Sparrow with both masculine and feminine objectives. I'll call my baby beautiful, pretty, handsome, strong, and I'll use both, compliment them, blah, blah. I'm telling you, I have, we have five boys. And you know what? There are times I've called my beautiful boys. I have said that. I don't know about pretty, but I, think, I know I've called them beautiful. No. They're not pretty, no. no. They're boys. I'm pretty. You're the pretty one. And everybody knows that. And strong. It does, you know, all this is just totally bizarro. Anyway, the parent worries how this daughter and Sparrow will be treated by their peers as they grow older. And yeah, me too. But they think raising them within rigid gender norms would be worse to assign your child a gender. No, your child is freaking born a gender. It's not assigned. Yeah, to assign your child... God a, assigned it. Right, a gender. And giving them gender-coded lessons their whole life is more coercive than we will. I'm sorry. Oh, my goodness. That's what this country's going to go yeah. to hell So fast. I'm going to tell you, like, for the 50th billionth time, you need to read this book, The True Reality of Sexuality. Learn what a, homo what a homophrodite is mm -hmm. and a true intersex person by their chromosomes, not how you feel that day. And 13 cubed. And you know, I was going to add another story and I forgot, but there was a woman sued by Planet, or was sued Planet Fitness because a transgender person, a man, was staring at her and took like an hour in her dressing room to put on his lipstick and wouldn't leave because they identified as a man that day. So it's bizarre. And I'm telling you, you're going to have to stand up for your rights because this is well, the programming I that's heard a being... better story like that. What? A woman and her husband went to celebrate a birthday in a Japanese restaurant where they cook in front of you. Yeah. And the and the, and the the cook, the chef, yeah. was, you know, being funny. And right. he, had, he had, you know, when they, they spray the, right. the, the counter with water to cool it off. Mm -hmm. And so he, he had a, a doll that was a plastic water bottle that had male parts. And when you squeeze it... Oh, the part, there. Yeah. yeah. So, so the he accidentally got water on the woman, mm -hmm. and she said that she was sexually assaulted oh, <laughs> by a plastic water bottle that's with a penis. Funny. That's that's hilarious. Mm -hmm. So I'm just telling you, people, this is crazy stuff, and you know you can either participate or you can stop it. It's your choice. And if you know somebody like this, you know I have a lot of compassion for them because they're mixed up and confused. I don't. They're morons. They're mixed up and confused. They have something they're trying to they're hide programmed from. Programmed, and they need to deprogram. They Period. need help. This has basic hyperspace helper. Again, I can get three of these in an envelope. Maybe a fourth book, no more than four pounds in one envelope. <laughs> This has basic deprogramming exercises. We don't deprogram you. I don't care what anything rumor says out there. We don't do it. We tell you what to do. And you have to take care of yourself. And you have to control your own mind. And if you fall in this because you want attention, you know what? You need to take another look at yourself. And if you are confused about what gender you are, if you'd like, I will look in your pants and tell you what you are. Jeez, I'm, I'm so happy to hear that. It's a special service I'm doing. Yeah. yeah. Now that'll be all over the internet. Add to the list. Yeah, there you go. Alrighty, so anyway, do your homework, take care of your mind. Uh, health and healing books, you know, you've got to do your work. Hyperspace Helper, Healing Archetypes and Symbols, Basic, Basic, Universal Law, Oops, wrong one. We got, a, we got a lot of books, people, a lot of information. Mm -hmm. Decoding your life, basic mm -hmm. universal law to help you take care of your mind. Mm -hmm. And remember, my, my upcoming series of webinars, you can join at any time, but you have to start, join when the sessions start. So this is Affirmations uh, book, but it has so many subjects, too many to tell you right now. So mm -hmm. check it out. Like, comment, share. Let us know what you think about this crazy world. And thank you. I will say you thank you again in advance for your kind comments. And any time you disagree, respectful disagreements, mm -hmm. please. Yes. Oh, I'm glad you mentioned that. Yeah. 
because a lot of people write in about, well, why don't you understand this and why do you say that and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Say, well, if you don't like what I say, go to another station. Yeah. And I also tell you, those who say, you haven't done your homework, you haven't done yeah. this. What have you all done? Yeah, you don't know. Like I said, we have tons of books. We have we are re researching 24-7 and we have done it And you don't know who decades. I know. I know a lot of people. That's right. So, but, yes. so don't sit in there. Don't tell us we don't know our stuff, okay? Because yeah. mm -hmm. then we know. It proves to me that you don't know. Exactly. So get your facts in order. I so. might be come over there. Take care. Bye. Bye.